So you're probably wondering what this has to do with this. Well, we're here at Sun and Fun 2023 with the Cub Crafters crew. We're gonna get some answers. I'm Brad Dom from Cub Crafters. I'm here with the, what we're calling the Carbon Cub UL. This is the new aircraft that Cub Crafters introduced here at Sun and Fun 2023. And this airplane features a Rotax 916 IS engine. It's the first Rotax 916 that's flying anywhere in the world. And it's the first Rotax on a Cub Crafters product. A lot of people have asked me, why are we doing this? Well, we need an airplane with multi-fuel technology for international sales. You just cannot buy Avgas in areas in South America and areas, you know, in the Middle East, uh, Israel. We've got a customer base there. Uh, it's very hard for them to get Avgas. And so this airplane is mostly geared towards international sales. The airplane itself, um, the Carbon Cub, it was first introduced to the market in 2006 with a 100, 100 horsepower engine. We updated the engine to a 180 horsepower, normally aspirated carbureted engine in 2009. And we've gone through several iterations and generational changes since then, where the airplane's gotten bigger engines, it's gotten faster, it's gotten more useful load, it's gotten more capable avionics packages. We've gone to constant speed props on the Carbon Cub itself. Each of those iterations added performance but it also added weight. This airplane is all about going back to the roots of the Carbon Cub, and we're gonna take even more weight out. And if you guys saw the, uh, the recent uh, event we did with uh, Red Bull in Dubai, where we landed a Carbon Cub UL technology demonstrator on a hotel, on a helipad on a hotel, um, that airplane was all about taking weight out of the Carbon Cub, adding performance. We teamed up with Mike Patey to do that, um, and that airplane is a lightened up, higher performing version of the Carbon Cub. This one here is intended to be the same thing. It's going to be a lighter version of the Carbon Cub. It runs on multi-fuel technology. It can run Avgas. It can run Mogas. Um, and uh, it's an airplane that we're very excited about uh, going forward. All right, so where this airplane uh, fits into the Cub Crafters product lineup is it fills a gap in our product lineup. The X-Cub is still our higher, highest performance airplane. It's got the biggest engine, the most speed, the most payload. At the far end of the spectrum, we've still got the Light Sport Carbon Cub. Um, the Light Sport Carbon Cub runs off of a high compression ratio, avgas only carbureted uh, Lycoming engine. Um, and then we've got other variants of the Carbon Cub that go on after that. We've got our Builder Assist program where people can build a higher performance version of the Carbon Cub with larger engine as an EAB with our assistance at the Cub Crafters factory. But what we really don't have is an airplane that fits into international markets very well. An airplane that'll run on auto gas where you can't get aviation gasoline. Uh, an airplane that fits into the ultralight category internationally uh, or the LSA category internationally. This airplane does that. Uh, the original Carbon Cub, uh, that that uh, design, which we're still producing today, the, the first generation Carbon Cub, it came to market in 2009 as a LSA. And now we've got more technology today, more than 10 years later than we did back then. So this airplane here, instead of vacuum bagged composites, uh, we called it the Carbon Cub because of the high, you know, the number of composites we used in building that airplane. It's got prepreg composites. Those composites, on those parts save about 30% of the weight of those parts. Uh, this engine, this Rotax engine, it's the installed weight is 50 to 70 pounds lighter than a similar horsepower uh, Lycoming engine. We're saving a bunch of weight there. This is an aluminum boot cowl on the Carbon Cub. It's now a composite boot cowl on this airplane here. Uh, titanium firewall that you can't see behind here. Titanium landing gear on the airplane. When we get done going through the rest of the development process, uh, the airplane will have a lot more prepreg composite in it. It'll have a lot more titanium components in it. It'll have very capable avionics, but avionics that weigh less on it, a power plant that weighs less on it. There'll be different propeller options. Um, there'll be a fixed pitch. We're running a constant speed right now, but there'll be a fixed pitch option. That's a very lightweight propeller for the airplane. Uh, fabric, this airplane has polyfiber on it. Uh, but we're going to take a close look at some of the lighter weight fabric options like Oratex for the airplane. So there's a lot that we can do with this airplane to take weight out of it. And we believe that we can get the airplane down 
where it can have a 200 pound pilot, 120 pound passenger, full fuel, and a reasonable 20 pounds or so of baggage and still be under 600 kilograms or 13, 20 pounds. That's our goal with the airplane. So working with Rotax has been a pleasure. Um, we started this process uh, almost two years ago. Uh, we shook hands at Oshkosh last year uh, with the product launch strategy. So last year, uh, Oshkosh 2022, we sat down, we defined the product launch strategy. We said we were going to have an airplane at Sun and Fun 2023, a flying airplane. Uh, Rotax delivered on their side. They got us the engine, they gave us the support, and Cub Crafters did the airframe work, the integration work. We've been flying it for quite a while now. Um, it's a great engine to fly. It's a total pleasure. I personally came into this without a whole lot of Rotax experience. Um, I've flown behind a couple of Rotaxes, but didn't know a whole lot about them. So I didn't have a whole lot of preconceived notions, and I was thoroughly surprised. Uh, the engine's powerful, it's smooth, uh, the airplane running this engine, it's fast. Um, we've still got some development work to do uh, to get you know temperatures right, uh, cooling, all that sort of stuff. We expected that. So there's still squawks to work out, but that's what we're gonna be doing for the next year is continuing the development process. So the, this airplane goes back, it gets handed to our engineering department. For the remainder of 2023, we're in a development cycle where we're taking weight out of the airplane, we're adjusting cooling, we're getting the performance numbers we want. 2024, we will have dealer demo airplanes out in the field. So that'll allow customers to get into what is a near final version of the airplane. And that's where we do our market survey work to get the customer's impressions, understanding what the customers wanna see, maybe what they don't wanna see in the airplane, where we can improve it. Um, that will lock the final design after the market survey, mid 2024 and then uh, we're into production early 2025. Uh, the first production position for the airplane is 2501. So our first airplane we build in 2025 will be a consumer airplane. Uh, that production position sold, that airplane's going to Israel. And we've taken another half dozen deposits here at the show since then. So people are excited about this. It's selling, we're excited about it, but that's the product line on it.